Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We are glad you are all here to celebrate this important day and the milestone of our confirmation students. We know that your faith journey is not over. This just is a new step in that. And so we are happy to partner, partner with you and have all of your families here as well as online this morning. Those of you that are worshiping online with us today, we invite you to write words of blessing and hope to our students during the rite of confirmation, and David will be reading those for us during our worship service so that our youth can hear those words of promise. We do have, unfortunately, one student that is participating online, unable to be with us here today, Rachel Matthews. So Rachel, I am imagining you in front of your television or computer, and she will participate as we pray for her and you over um, the internet. Also, this morning, this morning, Warner and Jemmy Jones, our confirmation teachers, weren't unable to be with us as well, but they are participating online, and they too will be writing some blessings for each of you today as well. Just a couple of other announcements. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, where we uh, celebrate and remember those who, saints in our lives who have died in the past year, whether they're from the congregation or from your lives. Please get those names to David by Wednesday so that we can include them in our worship service next week. Also, I want to invite you, I know it is very difficult to feel like we're participating in worship when we can't say anything or sing anything together. So... I'm going to ask you to help me out. There are two times during worship where we say the words and also with you. For example, when we pass the peace of Christ, um, I usually say the peace of Christ be with you always, and your verbal response is usually and also with you. But I am going to invite you to hand speak that. You're just going to put your hands out in front of you, offering me that gift of peace as well. So anytime we have and also with you, can you just show me that you're with me? Yay, thank you. I even got some giggles. Thanks. So this is what we are going to do if you are in present, just present in worship to help, um, well, just to help me. So it's very selfish of me. But thank you um, for participating in this way in worship. So with that, um, I invite you to take a breath and prepare your hearts and minds for a time of worship. I invite you to stand for the thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gives us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and us heirs of your promise and servants to all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial defend them against all enemies of the gospel, and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the word this morning. Our 
Our first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not look like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel this morning. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So, in honor of our confirmands this morning, we're going to have a visual sermon, because I'm guessing they may, well, I'm hoping, they're just going to nod their heads and tell me they remember this, (laughs) even if you don't, just, you know, say yes. Because we have two important texts to talk about today, two texts from uh, Jeremiah and Matthew. Jeremiah talking about the covenant, and Matthew talking about commandments. Jeremiah took place in 600 BCE, when the Middle East was at war, and Nebuchadnezzar had deported the Jews to Babylon. And in 1587 BCE, the temple and Jerusalem had been destroyed. So this is the time in which Jeremiah is speaking and trying to give words of promise and hope in this new covenant that Jeremiah proclaims. This new covenant with forgiveness and knowledge for God's people. This promise, this new covenant, this grace is fundamentally grounded in relationship. This covenant written on the heart, God says, This is the way that people embodied their relationship with God in the heart, lev or levev in Hebrew scripture. This place, this heart is mentioned 65 times in the book of Jeremiah. This is more than we have in the book of Psalms, Proverbs. So it's a pretty important concept for Jeremiah. This heart where you embody awareness and thoughts and disposition, and choices, and actions. This heart, this is where God is writing a covenant so that we can embody this grace. So I want to talk about that covenant, because in the past, some of our theology looked like this. Where's the youth? Yeah, I I sort of got a smile from the back there. I'm pretty sure underneath of that mask there was a smile. And my amazing drawing skills. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is what was considered and how we had to be in relationship with God. We had to climb this ladder to get to God. That there were things that we needed to do in order to get to God. Right? So Jeremiah is coming along and other people in our theology as it has evolved and given us, whoops, a different idea. Mm. given us a different idea of what this should look like. Goodness gracious, what this should look like. 
Which way do I need to go, youth? Down, yep. That God has come to us. We no longer have to climb up to God, but God has come to us in so many different ways in this covenant, but also from the very beginning in Genesis, God came to us in creation and created all humankind. And then God gave these blessings to Abraham. You are going to be a blessing to the world. And even though it got messed up every once in a while, God kept coming down to be in relationship with people. And then the judges and the prophets proclaimed this message of covenant here. And then, yes, even in Jesus, we have a God who has come with us, come down to us, Emmanuel. This covenant, then, this promise is what is lived out. And this is what Jesus is proclaiming in Matthew's gospel today. Again, these folks, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, have gathered around Jesus to try to trap him, asking him what is the greatest commandment. Because to say that you love God and not follow the law would be against what the Pharisees are believing. Right? So for the Pharisees, the law is a very important thing, whether that is to eat kosher which we think Jesus probably did. Or if it's to um, follow the purity laws, the purity laws of washing your hands before a meal or staying away from the unclean, and we know that Jesus never stayed away from the unclean. Or if it's the law about no work on the Sabbath, and we know that Jesus healed on the Sabbath. So these Pharisees are trying to trap him when they ask him this question. And Jesus' answer, it can't be reduced to this understanding of the great commandment. It's not a single goal. So Jesus points out the Deuteronomy chapter 6. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then just as quickly, he says this is the greatest and the first, and the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? So here then is the um, second diagram which goes like this. It's a simple line. That we have this vertical dimension of our fate, divine and human dimension. And then we have a horizontal dimension. Does that look familiar? Yeah? Can you tell what that is? Cross, yep. So we have this human to human dimension of fate. Right? That you can't build upon the human to human without your human to divine faith. Right? Divine God coming to us. You can't manifest this relationship with God without living it out to others. You can't build upon living it out with others until you have this foundation with God. This foundation with God is not complete until you live it out with humans. Are you confused? Nope. Okay, good. See, seems pretty simple. You guys all had your confirmation 101. Congratulations, right? This is what Jesus is proclaiming, that loving God at the core of our faith is what makes us complete when we love each other, right? This is what I heard from each of you as confirmation students when you wrote about your confirmation projects. This is what I told the council over and over again when I said, well done, church, as I gave a report on your behalf to them. That we had a youth draw pictures of the sanctuary and different elements of worship, sharing their passion of art, and then you supported by buying that art, and then that student could give to an organization in need. You supported the passion of building birdhouses so that we can partner with God's creation and care for God's creation in our outdoor area. You partnered and supported youth in their passions for sharing where they want to volunteer and how they want to live out their faith. Human, human. Well done, church. This is what confirmation is about, this learning that God has come to us and that we live out our faith with others. This is where you guys get to go next. Sorry, you guys is like a northern thing, isn't it? Where, sorry, where um, the confirmation students, you young men and women, you get to live into this covenant 
this promise and this commandment beyond birdhouses and art and volunteering, but in absolutely everything that you are, that God has created you to be. This is what we bless today as we bless each of you. This is what we honor in our lives, and this is what we get to live into, and thanks be to God for that. There's no song, right? Oh, man. Hold on. So, dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism for the following members who wish to affirm their baptisms. Brandon DeLong, Nathan DeLong, could you guys stand when I say your name? Just the students. Thank you. Ashley Jensitz, Rachel Matthews, Kirsten Polger. Did I say it right? No, Kirsten. I just practiced it right before worship, too. I'm so sorry, Kirsten Polger. Ah, One with us in the body of Christ who are making their public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these confirmands who you have made your own by water and word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. So, confirmands, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I renounce them. You can say it out loud slightly. Okay, perfect. Assembly, I would ask you to stand as I profess our faith in the words in the Apostles' Creed on behalf of all of us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confirmands, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, say, I do, and I will ask God to help and guide me. Great. People of God, do you promise to support our confirmands and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, give them a 
thumbs up or a pat on the back. If you are online, please write in the comments, we will. Did anybody write in the comments? The assembly may be seated. As a family, you will be coming forward when your name is called. One family at a time, an immediate family. Confirmation shepherd, I would ask when your student is coming forward that you just stand where you are and raise your hand as a moment of prayer. Unless, of course, you're in the same household then you can come forward as well. But otherwise, that will be what I would ask you to do. And Warner and Jemmy, as they are online, will be praying for you from there and offering prayers in the comments. Students, as you come forward, there will be a moment for you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead. In each one of these little bowls is some oil. So I will give you each oil right in front of you. You will make the sign of the cross on your forehead as we pray over you. Clear as mud, I'm sure, but we will make this work as, as you are coming forward. <clears throat> so Brandon DeLong. Brandon, if you will stand here. Your brother and mom are welcome to come. Yeah? <laughs> and you guys will lay your hands on Brandon as we pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to, the, to eternal life. Brandon, if you'll make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Stir up in Brandon the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Nathan. Well, you guys are the same family, but we'll give you a new one. Lay your hands on your brother. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Stir up in Nathan the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. You guys can head back to your seats. Any comments? We have some messages of congratulations from Linda Donnelly and lots of support from Linda Parrish, Bev Blackburn, Todd Donnelly, Marianne Briggs, Melissa Bondel, uh, and Pam Calipay. Thank you. Ashley, Ashley Jensitz, you and your family are welcome to come forward. Lay your hands on your daughter and let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Will you make the sign of the cross on your forehead? Stir up in Ashley the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you. You can head back to your seats. I'm guessing it's the same group of people saying congratulations as well. So Rachel, this prayer is for you. I invite you to have the family in your home lay their hands on you. And we pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Rachel, please make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Stir up in Rachel the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, 
the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Oh, I'm going to do it wrong again because now I'm all nervous. Kirsten. Kirsten. Ugh! Kirsten Polger, come on down. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I should have never even asked you this morning. I would have got it right. Parents, please lay your hands on her. We give you thanks, oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Please make the sign of your soul. Stir up in Kirsten. Lord, help us. Steer up in Kirsten the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. You may head back to your seats. And we have some comments. April Ferris, formerly April Golic, writes, congratulations to the Confermans, one of my favorite Sunday school classes a group of wonderful young adults. And Bev Blackburn writes, blessings to our granddaughter on this special day. May peace be with you. Pat Arndt Hartzell writes, what a great day for the Confirmands. And I have a slightly longer one from the Jones, who also taught confirmation. This is from Warner and Jemmy Jones. Congratulations to the Confirmands. It was a pleasure being part of your confirmation process. We look forward to your continued participation at Trinity in the church as a whole. We are always here for you. Lots of love and blessings, Warner and Jemmy Jones. Thank you. So I would ask the congregation to stand and confirmands hear these words of promise proclaimed from those gathered here as well as online. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. We proclaim and promise this with an acclamation of applause. That's you. <laughs> Students, I would remind you that you have gifts in the hallway from the congregation. Um, the flowers that you are wearing are from your church council, and then the congregation has given you a gift that I won't tell you what it is, but also a beautiful individual cake. We cannot have our cake reception that we normally have, so Debbie Golick, thank you very much, made all these individual cakes. So please be sure to take that blessing home with you and celebrate together with whomever is in your home today. I invite you to continue with me in a word of prayer. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom. Ignite in us the work of the Holy Spirit. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have reminded and remain, reminded us of God's grace and remained firm in their commitment. These confirmation students thank you for the people in their lives that have influenced, shaped, and mentored their faith. Their parents, Grammy Joan, Aunt Teresa, their grandparents and great-grandparents, Pastor Icorn, and all of the faithful people in this church and community. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. We pray for these confirmation students that they continue in the gift that you give them of the Holy Spirit in faith and truth. We pray for those in our community that are in need of your spirit of healing and wholeness. For Reagan, Braun, Pam, Ginny, Richard, Sandra, Betty, those suffering from COVID-19, and all those we name before you now. 
We pray in joy and thanksgiving for the gift of relationships. Today we rejoice with Juliana and Carmen as they are getting married on Saturday. Continue to bless them with your grace, love, and mercy as they live a life grounded in you. Lord, we thank you for your love and grace in our lives. As we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. The Lord Almighty is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. So I would invite you to um, be seated. I would ask the confirmation students as David is playing our uh, voluntary to come forward for a picture as a group picture. And then anybody, any families that would like to stay for a picture in the sanctuary, just remain where you are. If you are not staying for pictures, then you are welcome to exit out to the back of the sanctuary. Confirmation students, come on up. Thank you. 